Good afternoon, beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. This is Priscilla Ficklin McCallum, Red Carpet Interviews, with a very special guest this evening and also with our executive producer, Mr. Zachary Simpson, operating the camera. And also we want to send a great shout out to the Atlanta Falcons. I understand they are playing in Atlanta, Georgia on tonight. Go Falcons. And also... Greetings to the beautiful mayor of this great city, Miss Keisha Lance Bottom. And we are going to hear a little bit about her dad from our very special guest. And also, we just want to send a shout out to our Facebook friends, to our living legends across the country, and to this entire world. Thank you so much for tuning in to Red Carpet Interviews. And now, with further, with, without further, Further delay, we have none other than the magic man, musician himself, Mr. Harmon Henson. Woohoo! Thank you so much. We're so honored that he could join us here on the red carpet in person. So, Mr. Harmon, how are you on this afternoon? I'm doing great. Great to be here. We are so happy, and we can't. We gotta tell this listening audience that you played with none other than Mr. Jimi Hendrix, also Mr. Major Lance, also the Tams, also the list is just endless. So, without further delay, tell us a little bit about the musicians that you played with. Well, first of all, Jimi Hendrix played with me, <laughs> and, he and with you? <laughs> of course. And um, uh, sometimes people use that to try to overshadow me by using Jimi Hendrix. But, and they ask me, hey man, what happened to you? You, you and Jimi? And y'all did all this and you know, Jimi became so great. I said, well, he was great four years. I said, but I'm the greatest because he's dead and I'm still alive. And I thank the brother and I love him. But yes, uh, getting back to the great, the great mayor, the beautiful, the beautiful little girl that I saw, uh, and her mother, Sylvia, you know, which I love so much, Major. Me and Major Lance traveled so many places together. Sometimes Sylvia was there with us. And uh, uh, we recorded, and we went to Europe, and we did many things and traveled all over the United States. And I would like to see... I would like to see um, uh, Sylvia now, and I'd like to get to Keisha to shake her hand and tell her how proud I am for her making that, making that, that, that rank. Well, absolutely awesome. And hats off to Miss Keisha Lance Bottom, Mayor of this beautiful city. And so tell us, Mr. Hitson, where you come from and how you arrived to this point of your life. Well, I started out, <clears throat> I started out uh, born in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I started out. Uh, I stayed. I stayed. Uh, I was born in in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But uh, my father passed away, and my mother took us down south to her people, what was Osceola, Georgia, and wherein uh, I had another cousin down there, and his name was Dave Prater, and he came up, and him and Sam, they became Sam and Dave. Wow. Anyway. Um, uh, the guys became great, uh, but I I started out uh, after I left Osceola, Georgia, and my mother took me to uh, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida. Now that's when I began to hear black radio stations okay. and black artists. Uh, before then, all I heard was white folks singing country, uh, but I always loved gospel, and uh, when, uh, 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 many people was around, including my mother, she sang gospel too. And so I guess some of that stuff, you know, uh, ran down to me. Yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So do you have other ambitions? If you had not been an entertainer, what would you be doing today? I would be an artist. You'd be an artist. I would be an artist, a painter, and, and I, love, I love sceneries, and I love nature and the beauty of it. And uh, I... I I wish I could just go somewhere and just paint, <laughs> but and write my songs and play my my guitar and record and those kind of things. That is so great. So um, you don't know this, but you may not know this, but William Hart is an artist and he sells paintings. William Hart yeah. from the Delphonics. Oh yes, yes. Yes. 
So what lessons have you learned in this life? Well, one thing I learned uh, that there were two words in show business. <laughs> show and business. Yeah, show and business, and uh, we were the product. You do the show, and the other people do the business. <laughs> oh, no, they took all the business, baby. They took all the money? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were yeah. the show. Yeah, we were the show. I mean, we were showing out too, buddy. But, you know, we had beautiful suits, man. You understand? Gorgeous George would, uh, he was. <laughs> he would get them from uh, 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 Texas and some from Mexico. The great Mohairs in all the colors and all the entertainers began to want that because Gorgeous George was sharpening all of them. <laughs> <So> <laughs> and after Gorgeous George leave the stage, they were scared to come on. <laughs> George, George's George is so famous here in Atlanta, Georgia. Could you just expound a little bit on what he did with the music industry, please? Well, one thing, Gorgeous George is more known as an, uh, a professional uh, MC yes. and a legendary entertainer that most people I know. And all entertainers know him. Everybody in show business almost. But, yeah, yeah, but the thing is that this, Oh, uh, we have a beautiful history, uh, him, myself, and Jimi Hendrix. Oh, wow. uh, the thing is, I met Jimi uh, uh, before I met George, really. Is that right? Uh, we was in Macon, Georgia, and we were looking at another guy, and he was a get, get, guitarist and a great one, and he had, um, he had, he had a group called the Pine Toppers. And we were down there looking at him, and that was the first time I saw him. I um, uh, I didn't see him no more after that, until I saw him in New York. And 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 I would always go to New York. My manager would would pay my way there to hotels and all that stuff, and have the recording session already waiting on me. And I'd go put my voice on uh, the whole Ohio players. Uh, 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 would put my tracks down for me sometime, okay. and I would come in and lay my voice sometime a guitar. And uh, I wouldn't stay in New York all that long. I would stay there three or four days, and I'd leave. And uh, 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 when I get there, sometime uh, my phone would ring, yes. and it would be Jimmy. Jimmy. And yeah, yeah, and he would come over. Uh, I find out where he, where he's at, okay. and I would all. I always stay at the Teresa Hotel in New York. Uh, many entertainers stayed there also, but my manager would always put put me there, Johnny Brandon. And Henry would come up, he'd know I'm going to the studio, and he would go to the studio with me all the time. But I was doing an R&B album called Too Much for the Human Heart. And and um, uh, uh, after, after a break time or something like that, if there's a guitar, Jimmy gonna pick it up, and he gonna sit in with me. He, he didn't have to ask. And and the albums are out now, and been out, and I didn't I didn't know. I thought I had forgot about the songs because we did them in '65 and '66. And uh, uh, we would I was doing the R&B, but during the break, man, Jimmy. And Lee Moser would just start playing the blues and all this kind of stuff. And it was it was rockish. And they didn't want to put that out then because they was calling us some kind of nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the music was excellent, huh? Yeah. And then we messed around and got a got a foot pal. A wow wow wow. A wow wow then they really said we was crazy then. And uh, you know, we became flower children and all this stuff. Wow, but what was so big about <laughs> Performing in New York City, being in New York, what was... Well, New York, <clears throat> during that time, uh, all the studios and all the breaks that you can get in all the record companies, uh, New York, uh, Los Angeles, and if you make it in New York, you can make it. Right. So and it, it wasn't easy to get in, but but my manager... He would uh, he was easy to put me on different labels: Atlantic Records, um, uh, Atco, uh, Minute Liberty, and me and Barbara Womack was on Minute uh, uh, for a while, and uh, um, until 
until um, uh, some things happened in life there, and and I was kind of I was kind of pushed pushed away from those labels uh, uh, because uh, there was a thing um, uh, an accident happened, and all of a sudden the papers come out and blame me for the accident uh, before they found out what was happening. And then uh, what happened, and, uh, it kind of made the, uh, the labels of Fred, so they backed off. And now my son, I didn't have a label anymore. Yeah. And then all the newspaper, New York Times, and all these people saying all these things way before anything uh, was completed, or uh, the court, or uh, to find out did I do it or did not, didn't. But the thing is this. Once you stick a nail in that wall right there, even if you pull it out, the scar's still there.